pass and the mongols they paid it once and they won so we'll have to wait and see how things pan out either way i'm very very excited we're heading into all's overpass what have the mongols got for us last thing to play this esl challenger yon tripping quals and they beat lin vision 13 to 11 and already a fight out via long here techno making a move flick could potentially be caught off guard oh my god he just tucks his head in time Tap, 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 coming off. No finds, though. VP, of course, beginning things quite slowly, not wanting to give the game away. Norbert catches Blitz. Going too deep, ultimately. Sensu, however, looking for good timing here. Ooh, Mazzinio, distractionary shot round the corner. Not able to get anything else. There it is, Sensu. The fight comes his way. Standing his ground here, nice and confident for it. Four versus three, make it two. Sensu with a big hold in at short water confirms the position of the remaining two players as well. Still not a sure deal for Mongols. It's a very, very slow pistol being played out here. The two remaining though, Electronic and Flame got a lot to do and not a hell of a lot to work with. Making their way up towards bottom con here and it, the choice might be to go up towards that top side. Techno's going to hear this and information relayed over. He's posting up front bathrooms. He might be able to catch him on the flank. He might be able to make it work. Fame doesn't check it. Techno getting in behind. Should get one for free and he will. It's the bomb being dropped. Time ticking. And they just surely cannot get towards the site to plan here. Surely not. Electronic picks it up. Needs to get it down. He's being flanked from behind. Surely Nantes not going to give him the luxury. And he won't. So no plant and no round. It's Mongols who draw first blood. I'd say pretty convincing as well, to be honest with you. Again, individuals standing ground looking very confident there. Super impressive here as we see it pan out. But yeah, I'm very much impressed by the Mongols hitting the ground, running on overpass. Not going to be an easy showing. Now, one of the things is, right, you, you can start to roll them forwards, but the Mongols themselves have had a couple weeks off. You know, they've gone home, they've come back. Mm. So this is certainly an area in which they could have improved. Perfect flash round, though. Sensu, not this time. I guess cool. Two rifles to work with. Actually not terrible. Versus Pro, 9-10. He's tucked. Deep long. It's a it's you know traditionally against I guess a gun round. It's a bit of a one of an angle. Against pistols. Might have the opportunity to isolate a couple of fights. He might just get it as well. Does Fame even clear this? I don't know whether he would. 9-10. Barrel spotted. Easy kill. Finds it. And he sticks around. He hasn't seen any more presence. And when he does. Going to start delivering on a couple more kills. James going to pick up the rifle. I don't know whether he can make too much of a difference here, though. Numbers now back in favor of the Mongols. Flit's got space on A. That's maybe the only thing that they have working for them, but there is an opportunity for 9-10 to cut the bomb off. He's looking. He's watching. Ah, he's going to get distracted away. He needs to be careful here. Good discipline being shown, not wide swinging in, not taking too many angles. There's the silent rotation round as well. Flash over the top. And Mr. James all alone here with 15 seconds left. Definitely wants to go down before the timer ends. Well, he will. Let's we'll see him off. Swing and a find. That's a second on the board. Really nice stuff. Gotta say, those Mongols jerseys, they're pretty fire, man. I know they just released a new one the other day. I saw a tweet about it. It's pretty cool. They got two different ones. They got basically, it seems like a home and away. They got kind of the black and gold, the classic, and then they've also got that white and blue. Pretty fire, man. I know they got a pretty sick, like, bomber jacket. But I don't think you can, like, get it. It's just, you know, they use it for the tournaments. Only they have access to it. It goes hard, though. It goes hard. 2 0 start. VP. Into an investment again. James taking the hit with a lesser buy as he's only got a tech nine. The rest got rifles. I want to pop it. They're going to contact play and the contact works. Norbert going to find the first. Senzu backside caught by a flash as Blitz going to play up close. 
And he should get the kill, which he does. Full blind. Hunter's back on towards Electronic, but there's a lot of room for VP to work with here. Yeah, looking good. Looking very, very good for them. We'll see. Utility going to start to go down. There's a couple of gaps in places. 9-10 punished, but the bomb has yet to make its way on towards the site, even. Flits in position. Plan being faked out, not being held just yet. Blitz taking his time and perfect timing on it. Oh, yes. Wonderful stuff. And they have bomb control now. No need to get super giddy here. This is a really, really weird CQB kind of battle going down on the B-bomb site, to be honest. Smoke down. Blitz might just have signed his death warrant. We'll see. Fame position given away. Can't get it done. A 4K round from Blitz there in a short... Really, really solid stuff. So, already, Urtus Pro being tested a little bit on their own map pick. It's a map in which VP have trust to identify themselves as being one off, if not the absolute best in the world. Definitely up there. So far, no dice. The Mongols have obviously done their research. Like we said, this veto, it was pretty easy to predict. They've both got into their own first picks. The standard ones they normally always go for. And then the second best map for both of them has been floated as the decider. Would make you think that with the Mongols and of course and VP have done a hell of a lot of prep coming in towards this veto. And so far, the prep for the Mongols seems to be working very well. Jame had an AK, dropped. 0-4, struggling to get activated, Jame. He has 9-10s all, rattles off for the first. I think it will be scooped back up as fame will wield. Already, though, at a numbers disadvantage and being smoked out of most places. Where do you go now with your VP? Looking very comfortable. Mongols. Quite ready for a B hit to come in. Are they ready for three from short, though? The AK in the mixture trying to bait the teammates out. Electronic does well for one. It is fame on the backside. This could get a bit scary. These are two of the best riflers on this squad. Electronic dropped early. Fame left to do it all. Actually had the drop on Blitz there a little. Still able to reset the fights ever so slightly, but they know exactly what he is up to. Got that bomb. Ooh, smoke doesn't quite do the job that he wanted. 40 HP here as well. So, you know, everything kind of working against him at the end of the day. They're starting to surround him, starting to close the gap. 10 seconds left. Not much that he can do. And again, this is a situation where he probably does want to go down. A desperate attempt at the bomb plant will not happen. And four in a row now for the CT side. Great work. Really, really solid out from the Mongols. This is exactly what we want to see kind of come in towards this game and just sort of take about the scruff of the neck. Don't allow Virtus Pro to play their game. The Mongols can do that. So far, so good. Of course, there's been maybe some slightly dicey economic situations for the Virtus Pro. We're just holding them back a little bit. But they're starting to run out of those excuses. What's that previous gun round? A couple of half buys not gone well. Miss Molly, though, by Techno. Not the end of the world, but... A little bit of rust there, I guess you could say. Full AK's out. Or VP. One of the things they do lose out on as well is useful across the board. Fame doesn't really have any left. I need double flash in orbit too. Might make a uh, a double pump execute a little bit dicey. But a contact play towards A is the call here. Nine tens in the open, and nine ten gonna get caught. Very exposed angle. And a reface from Techno inefficient doesn't work double opener and that probably should be the round two yep looking likely sir well, i'm gonna go down i think with that they will indeed move to save no but on the other side maybe starting a hunting party the mongols will be aware of their surroundings here paramount that they hold on to these three rifles as well if they are to find themselves a continuous buy pattern. VP, though. Getting there first and getting it flawlessly, man. Not a single point of damage taken. Really well played. So. 
couple of saves. Not the worst thing in the world for Mongols. They can reinvest in around it. And the big one that they lose there is just 9-10 getting caught off guard. Of course, it does mean uh, an hope for free too, which you're going to take every day of the week if you're James. And this is exactly where VP can start things off in a positive note for themselves, right? You know, one thing to get that one T-side round on board. Slowly but surely, VP start to prove what they're all about. Buy back in. 9-10. Gets his trusty AWP, but he just got caught so exposed there. If you're going to play out via map, if you're going to rotate off it, you've got to rotate back dice. Going in front of the side like that, one missed shot, which of course happened. Attack slowed down, and before you know it, dead man walking. They done towards the monster smoke, doesn't expose it. James doesn't take his pop shot. Again, seems to be a bit of a faster setup from VP. Yeah, they're going to go rolling in quite quickly. Minute and a half left on the clock, changing things up. Ooh, it's a little awkward. Team damage coming in. Electronic left incredibly low. Sensu in that kryptonite position right now. They have to put a pause on it. Ooh, that smoke was a bit dangerous for me. I'm not going to lie to you. Might have gone further in. Doesn't matter. Molly had already done the damage for the nade to finish him off. So, BP tickles here and there will eventually drop Barrel's player. What do they do now with this advantage? Jay making a move. Like you said, right, the numbers in their favor for VP, they're actually not in a complete rush here. Gonna pump the brakes ever so slightly. Classic VP, right? They do like to slow things down, but the numbers says it works, but Fane falls off. So that's our sound cue. Audio game for the Mongols. This double stack towards B in the right place. And of course, there's no point anymore being quiet about it. Blitz look directly into that flash. James going to take a nade. I think Blitz might have been spotted there. Gun barrel wide. So he's going to come through. Going to get one. Nearly a second. Pistol pulled out as well as 9-10. Desperately dancing around it. Up on top of the boxes in the 1v1. And James somehow finds the second. I can't believe 9-10 doesn't trade. And James going to make that one stick. That was so dicey though. Still absolutely wild round. Not the VP way at all. They're playing a bit faster here. Still calculated enough for my money, but indeed, really, really aggressive stuff in the early round, especially. Yeah, it's unlucky for the Mongols. It is very unlucky, you do have to say. They will move back round for a buy here now. Not wasting any time getting it going as when he is running out, but they have to even it up ever so slightly. Nice molly, nice idea from Mazzinho. Just blind it up and can't finish the frag. Electronic holding for push out via short. I don't think I'm going to be giving it. it. It is a feasible investment, though, for the Mongols. MP9 at close range where Techno is is, is pretty scary. And a Deagle in Blitz's hands. That too. I don't think he's in game so far, but a real chunky nade. Senzu, 9-10 played this position earlier. They do not clear him, so you're going to get one. Game round that corner. But if you post up, oh, a rare, uncharacteristic miss. And the MP9 up close is going to get one too. This is very sloppy from Versus Pro, and they are being punished. Head on a swivel as Senzu turns around. He looks for yet one more. Flit's got their ideas. And 1v4 turn 1v3. This is not easy to convert. No, sir, not at all. He will try and pick up everything that he can. The orb, not actually out of the map, but a decent enough job on it. Still, ace overall required here. 20 seconds as well now. I don't know if he's even going for it. Think at this stage without him finding anyone pushing in or whatever, there's no real option but to save. He just has zero info. So it's kind of fair enough. Kind of a shame at the same time. Mongols, though. They will find number five. A huge steal from them there on the half. Well, mm, full spent yeah. weak buy. Let's call it a weak buy. But it is still around. They definitely shouldn't have been winning like that. Yeah, you know, they're coming in with an MP9. Uh, you know, a pistol. We're, we're looking at that. And we're not expecting uh, fireworks. But we absolutely do get it. Really, really solid from Senzu. 
just so reliable. And even the MP9 getting one up close there, super important. The Mongols, this is still a good start. However, you know, I know there's what the numbers say, but let's talk about, you know, the vibes, right? I would say four rounds on T-Side Overpass isn't actually that bad. I think it's workable. Uh, I don't think VP are in too much trouble just yet. You know, we're into the midway part of this first half. Four, five rounds, I think is absolutely fine on what is, at one point, was the most CT style map in the pool. It did change towards the tail end uh, before it got removed. It, Nuke kind of reclaimed the throne there, but for a long time, it was overpass. I can kind of understand why. It can be very, very difficult, this T-Sider, and Virtus Pro are feeling the difficulties of it, of it right now. Much movement across the map here. They get into their defaults, boost up on the B-bomb site for the CT end. But not a lot of presence. VP going back to the tried and true method of the late move. However, variance here. They will contact in. The utility over the top looks super effective. Nazinho caught completely off guard. Still got Sensu at the back end of the site. Blitz on the rotation, gets aggressive, costs him his life. And maybe even the round flick, calculating with the information where he needs to pinpoint in those coordinates to find the clean head shot. And that might just do her for this round. We'll see. Boost for Techno 4K. No, okay, 910 getting up on the boost. My bad, but all the same, they're ready for it. Jane plucks him out. They now know that Techno's there as well. And that is number three for VP. Any more on the way out? Yes, is the answer. We'll see off the last. So over Virtus Pro. Good T side round coming through. Slow early round. They wait for the opportunity and they take it. Simple as. Popping out on towards the side. Good trains coming through as well. And that's all you want to kind of do in that situation. When the opportunities are given, individuals like Flip, for example, pushing after your smoke blitz. You know, Flip's going to take that every day of the week. One of the most solid riflers in this entire region. So a timeout will be called here by the Mongols. And honestly, I don't really blame them. They are in a position where I think as well for the Mongols, they are allowing opportunities. You can see Mara get on the mic just to make sure he doesn't let this team enter back in. Three rounds, not a terrible position that they're in at the moment, only two rounds behind. And with kind of the unstable economic situation out for the Mongols, you have to be a little careful. Either way. That's just pro. A little bit of a weird by themselves. Flit's got a UMP. And then James got an AWP. It's a little rogue, but I kind of rate it. Is some level of a buyout for the Mongols isn't great. One M4, one scout, and a few upgraded pistols. Yeah, not the best. Not the best, but, you know, they found success with something similar to this previously, so... The chance. Ooh, what a shot! Blitz will open up proceedings for the Mongols. Alrighty, these low-buy rounds seem to have Mongols written all over them at the moment. Ah, oh, and the M4 that Electronic is walking into looks pretty scary. Flash comes round, he knows that he's here, but 910 cleanly takes it. On goal, some lovely instinctive plays, very spontaneous plays, I think is maybe the term that I'm looking for, and they find great success there. 5v3. So... Things go quiet once again. This is the VP special, right? Pump the brakes, but they just don't have the numbers to work with. It's the thing that lets them down. Norbert. Gonna try his best, though, to bring it back. Models up towards barrels. Nobody there. We're crossing towards the site. Finds the monster player. Made to work for that kill a little bit. Up on towards bridge, and he gets caught on the reload. Oh, my God. How has he not died there? Techno misses his chance. An opportunity squandered. As the smoke comes down on towards the site and he starts to move around. Norbert finally gets dropped. 
He won't be able to do either. Getting that bomb down, most likely, thankfully, Flit sees it off. This is a really scrappy round, considering the bite out, and it all falls apart. They could not get it down in time. They struggled with that, I guess, that box player. It's a bit of an unorthodox angle, and the bomb doesn't go down. Just like that, Mongols steal it away out of nothing. VP leaving it way too late. Next in some of these rounds, you know, very, very uncomfortable um, with how it's going. It's actually Dustin on the mic here, and, you know, you don't always see him getting vocal in these timeouts. He's also covering his mouth doing the classic, you know. I love it. I love it. Just in case the lip readers start hey, well, you to... You never know, man. You never know. Stealing strats. Stealing strats. Mm -hmm. For sure. It's fair enough. One of those things, though. I mean, if I'm him... Who cares? Rides overpass. We ain't gonna see this map for <laughs> no, no, no one's yeah, pocketing you know, overpass VP, stats and VP are it. setting up the bring back <laughs> overpass lobby as we speak. You know they are gonna be funding oh, yeah. all I'm their prize them, money into uh, lobbying Valve to bring it back as soon as possible. I'll be there, mate. I'll sign the petition. I'll buy the t-shirt. Whatever needs to be done. I love this map. I'm very sad to see it go. I hate dust too, so. But, in all fairness, I don't think VP mind it. So I don't think they're too annoyed. I think I remember seeing one of the, I think, the, you know, the lobby, the little interviews, and I'm pretty sure Electronic was saying he didn't mind it. So, maybe it could be the start of the VP arc on this map. We'll see. Back to the action at hand, though. He can make it a move. Oh, 9, 10, good find. Boost works, flip, dropped. Very important kill to find. Electronic, edge of the smoke business. He's actually up really, really close here, quite early on into the round as well. Are they savvy of this? I'm not so sure. Smoke going to start to go down now. What does Electronic do? Ah, yeah, they must know. Molotov goes in to force him into a fight. He goes down. A classic, aggressive Electronic move, but it does not pan out here. Mongols on the cusp of seven. Can I move 9 10 might get caught here. Norbus Galil. Flash over as well. Fame and Jane starting to make a move up through Banana. Norbert's got to get at least one kill here on this long fight. And he did just use his last flash as well. Techno sitting up close. And he doesn't even get one. It's unfortunate. Down goes Fame as well. And James AWP, you already know where this is going, ladies and gents. You know exactly what time it is. But he hasn't given the luxury of it. Mazzinio rotates off from that B anchor position. And it's Mazzinio time as he denies the save coming through. Mongols are looking really solid. If they take away overpass, it actually throws this series up in jeopardy here for the VP side. And so far, 7 3 is not bad. Yeah, I mean, I would say so, for sure. I, I think they can be very, very happy with this, you know? I do um, obviously fear for that second half and what VP are going to be capable of over there, but at the moment, this is a really, really great look, and, and they're in control of the game. They're playing from ahead. It's very, very impressive just in and of itself, regardless of how the map pans out. I think that they are playing above and beyond their ability that we would have expected. You know, they've got one official on this map at the moment. So, you know, you figure, you see that VP pick it, it's like, come on, come on, it should be a breeze. But they, I think, as we talked about, know and recognize this to be a real hole in the defense, hole in the map pool. And thus, it's clear they've been working on it. Yeah, spot on. Jame, the only AK. Any real kind of investment in this one. Nade comes over. Decent chunk of damage there. On towards J-Man Flip. Mazzino are going to be testing the second. He's waiting. Redrops the smoke at the perfect time as well. And he spam would have been huge, but they don't opt for it. One playing anti, one playing back. First contact. This is a good setup, a standard monster setup. With 30 seconds left. VP don't really have any sort of choice bar going towards B now. Sensu and Mazzinio. Oof, yeah, scary combination here. Sensu for the double spray down. Mazzinio got his man covered and they just can't stop fragging. 
The bullets are perfect, man. I mean, they don't even take any return damage considering there's four on the other end of that. Flit will save. Is he going to be given the luxury, though? The answer is no. Sensu gives him the mercy of before time, but all the same, a heck of a round there from the Mongols. Oh, that's good. This is good. They're making the easy ones thick, and the ones they have to work for as well. Yes, they're close, but they're still seeing them over the line. Already now up to eight. It's, it's a super solid display. I said four rounds is good enough, generally speaking, on the T side. Obviously, it requires you to get a pistol if you're Virtus Pro, but you can make four rounds work, especially in MR13. But Virtus Pro have really struggled to get going. They've really struggled to make a conversation so far out of this first half. And Senzu brilliantly executed. Norbert gets deleted immediately. Wonderful stuff. Smoke. Oh, it does actually break efficiently. And he is able to fall away. Yeah, that's kind of wild. A bit lucky. What is going on here? James wildly running in. Just so foreign to him and the rest Ooh. of his Sensu, though. It doesn't matter. The hold out from ABC. Easy as one, two, three, you might say. Four, in fact, to be fair to him. The ace, I think, will be starved away as fame left. To try and pick this up, of course. Final round of the first half. Four to get through. He does have the bomb. That's about the only thing he has going for him. Full HP. Really clutching at straws, though, isn't he, at this point? Senzu. He might get it. He's on the flank. Surely he's going to get it. Timing should be his best friend and fame going to be seen off. All five for Senzu to close it. 16 kills to his name at the half. And a really good half of Counter-Strike by the Mongols. Question is, do Virtus Pro have anything in the locker to answer back? We'll have to see after the break. Gentlemen, welcome to season 19 of ESL Pro League. First rule of Pro League is you do not talk about Pro League. Second rule of Pro League is you do not talk about Pro League. Third rule, someone yells stop, loses their voice, taps out, the cast is over. Rule number four, maximum three to a cast. Fifth rule, two maps at a time, fellas. <laughs> Sixth rule, there will be no breaks. There will be no sleep. The Counter-Strike network never stops. Seventh rule, overtime will go as long as it has to. And the eighth and final rule, if this is your first season of ESL Pro League, you have to cast. It doesn't matter about the fact that he's running around. He's on the clock, drops it at one and three. He's on the flag, but on the side. This kid from work, Harry, couldn't remember whether you told him to smoke Ticket or Jungle. But Harry was a god for an hour when he casted. Sometimes, all you could hear were the loud, booming sounds of yelling. Or the wet choke when someone whiffed and sprayed. Stop! You weren't alive anywhere like you were there. But Pro League only exists in the hours between when Pro League starts and ends. Even if I could tell someone they had a good cast, I wouldn't be talking to the same man. Who you were in Pro League is not who you were outside of it. A guy came to Malta for the first time. He could cast a few rounds at most. After a few weeks, he was the last one off. If you could cast with any talent, who would you cast with? Active or retired? Doesn't matter. Who'd be good? Pansy. You? 
Sado. I cast with Sado Kissed. Yo, what is up? Welcome back in here. The Mongols taking over overpass, it would seem. We do flip halves here, of course, and flip sides is the important thing because VP, they will have a real deep CT side, a real scary CT side, but Mongols, I would say, have given themselves enough room to work with. Get a pistol, work on one or two rifle rounds. How hard can it be? Now, we have seen already today, it can be quite hard, in fact. So, they have to pick things up where they left off quite swiftly. And Mr. Flitz has got other ideas. Four out on B right now. Flit will go down, however. And it's all a fake out at the moment. Mazzinho just keeping attention in this B area. One out via long. One making a move to join up as a two front bathroom play with the bomb. Only issue is, though, is they're making a move here. The rotations are coming over from Versus Pro. Worst spot to find themselves in a range. Couple of taps from James as well. That's information gained at the very least. It looks like they're going to commit towards A. No bother. It's a lot of presence. It's basically going to be 3v3 on the site itself. Even one down to anchor. And it all comes down to the Raw Angels as Utah's running low now. James, backside. Waiting for the opportunity, and in comes the swing as well. Jame, fame combined with ease. And the last man of Techno got nothing in the locker. A very, very simple pistol round out from Virtus Pro. And that is the start of the back of a 9-3 half that they absolutely needed. Yeah, brilliant stuff. Absolutely brilliant stuff, to be fair to them. I think that, you know, uh, again, there was a clear directive into this round. Four on B, one pushed uh, on the boost, one pushing short. And sort of well recovered in a way from them, the loss of map control down to the four players on B early. So we'll see here. Eco coming out from the Mongols. Just a deagle for Blitz. And even that is kind of an overspend for me. Yeah... I've got a lot of money left in the back pocket. It's at 1350. Might have to be, unless he gets a couple of kills of it, might have to be a Glill or a Mac 10. SMG's not the worst thing in the world. Speaking of, Flitz SMG could get active in a second too. Gets him behind. Could get a lot of money. James, same for him. UMPs are underused these days, it seems. Versus Pro single handedly are bringing them back into the fray. And James surely got an opportunity to get a hell of a lot of money in a second. Swing first is good. And then in comes James as well for one of his own. Super simple stuff. And the UMPs are cleaning house alongside the M4 as well. A lot of money in the back pocket. Senzu. Might be the same story for him. And it is. Nice and easy. Super simple. Yeah. Easy stuff in the end. All right. So we'll see moving forwards here if the Mongols can actually deliver on uh, their T side of things. You know, this is where we kind of start to worry about them. Could be a disappearance. Could deliver something impressive. I think that VP, um, yes, are a very scary team here. But so far, the Mongols, for me, on an individual level, an individual standpoint, have been looking absolutely fantastic and really able to bring a level of game that we just weren't expecting. Sensu especially looks absolutely fantastic. Blitz alongside him. Pretty clean also. There's not much of that out from VP just yet, but maybe this second half is where they can flex their muscles a bit more. A little quiet. Jim holding. Need to be peaked. Back of the flash as well. Takes a pop shot. Does spot some information. Just playing out towards Rock. Actually, a pretty good position for Techno to hold in all fairness as they're grouping up via front bathrooms. 
Once again, A seems to be the site they want to hit. It's chain rotates over. He, I think he might have spotted the hand there as well. Gonna fall away, but it should be good information being relayed. A flash to buy some time. Just shy of a minute, and in comes the execute, it seems. They're making a little move. And there's that first kill. James Orp rattles off. Very important opener. Standing strong for long as well. Creeps forwards. Eventually finds another over there. Keeps them coming. James, absolutely unstoppable. They have no answer for him. Sensu now finds himself alone and a reposition towards long and at least be near the bomb. But I think he's given it 25 seconds of chilling. And VP, a huge message to send here now. No contest at all for them in this first rifle round. This is exactly what we want to see, man. We are seeing VP start to essentially showcase how good they can be. This is a side that when they want to, they can absolutely take over a game. And that's what we're seeing. Senzu, I don't know if he be given the luxury of saving here. Holding. Yeah, no swing. So he is just about the AK will stay alive, but it's the only luxury they've got to work with. So far, so good. Versus Pro, they have to come in towards the second half and get out the gates flying. And, and that's what they're doing. James really sort of round out from him with the AWP. Three super simple kills, all isolated. Information on the fourth as well, relayed towards Fame. Doesn't really get any better. With that one AK, they don't actually buy around it here, Mongols. They're going for that lower investment. So Senzu's money will be pretty rough next round. Unless he can keep the AK alive, that is. Blitz. Oh, gets caught in transition. That's actually a pretty big one for the Mongols. They're going to pick up the pace, not wasting any time getting into A. Rotation comes up from Electronic. James trying to buy time with the Molotov. They're a little ahead of it. Smoke going down. It's confusion all over. Fame at long. Will he be dealt with? They're so heavily split here, unfortunately, for the Mongols. Nice find from Blitz around the corner. Three versus three now. Bomb recovered. Just about... And the smoke is still there for the plan. Nobody wants to give the game away on the VP side. Sensu, an aggressive move in. Electronic waiting patiently, but Blitz ready to take him down. Sensu closing the gap between he and the CTs, but it's 9-10 on the back. There's no way they expect this guy coming round. He's able to drop Norbert, leaves Jame all alone, panicked and unsure of where to look. And the Mongols, with the pace, with the coordination, have hit double digits a little too early for VPs like it. Massive round. Absolutely massive round to be taken. Without a shadow of a doubt, changes the narrative of where we were at. We were talking about VP starting to make a really good comeback and then being basically, what, one gun round to work with, being the difference between where we are now and kind of, you know, VP tying this game up. And that round being taken there off the back of a essentially a low buy, right? Just nothing around that save there it is huge. Mongols cracking to double digits. Only three rounds away now from stealing away overpass. And it goes about saying, now VP are feeling the pressure. Dastan getting, you know, back on the mic here. He knows that this is a bit of a perilous spot. Yes, they can buy back in. That's the nice thing about this. But in terms of where this game stands right now, if you allow the Mongols to start to deliver on their T side, change things up. It's huge. What around there, really well done. We've seen a couple of individuals really come alive. You know, Blitz obviously 13 kills, but Senzu's 18. Miraculous, 9-10s at a couple of moments too. He does have his favorite AWP to try and challenge that of Jane. So far, kill-wise, just a little bit ahead of him too. Jane trying to get aggressive for a first. No success. Oh. I think that nade was meant to go a bit deeper, to be honest, but maybe it was meant for the boosting players. Either way, nothing ringing off in terms of the util damage for the Mongols. Electronic spamming out as well. We got a little boost up, kind of late. No one around, no one really. Ooh, entertaining it. However, a speedy look in and Flit loses his life. He had the right idea, but just could not find the kill. Thought he was maybe away, thought he was safe. And it ain't the case, so Mongols getting the man advantage early on.
Jame holding. Senzu spotted and dropped. Good find. And he'll fall away on traded. Huge. 40 seconds for the Mongols to make a decision. Bathroom control taken, which is good. Bit of long presence too. That's what the orb's holding for. Only issue is James kind of ice age today. He very much could be overwhelmed. He'll get the support of fame rotating back through. Is James going to play up close? Techno could get some timing on that swing as well. Looking for the fight. Tap away. Fame and Jane both combining. Trying to bait out the shot. And now it will. Time's ticking though. And James going to find the trade as well. The last man, I think, in a lot of trouble. 9 10. This is a big ask. And he's not going to be able to do it. VP answer back. And they're going to find a seventh. And they are far from done in this one. Yeah, absolutely, man. You know, uh, again, the Mongols struggling against these super strong individuals. A keen opener like that on, on overpass. You know, really, for a lot of teams, it's going to be enough. But Jame especially just continues this monstrous defense in and around dice. Second round now, we've seen him find high numbers from that spot. Scary stuff for the Mongols to deal with. Low buy to come round. Two AKs and an AWP. Still pretty scary, but surrounded by Tech Nines is never nice. They've converted around. Kind of like this before, so maybe. Might be a chance. AWP and AK. It's not the easiest, but it isn't impossible. So again, making a little move. A seems to be the real point of contention with the Mongols, the consistent factor for them, always going towards our top site. Not changing up. Triple stack via B, though. Leg spotted. That's an AK also spotted as well. Jane going to hit that Molotov directly, and he will actually fall. Caught in the flames, ticked down and tagged. Fame will fall too, and another round that Mongols might just steal away. Yeah, VP really struggling against these ones. You know, maybe when Mongols are playing uh, less predictable, and just fearless as well. Yep, it will be the round going the way of Mongols. VP going to save. They're not even going to risk it in. I mean, it's completely fair enough. Tail end of the game. You don't want to be running out of cash like this. But the Mongols now threatening this overpass, which is mental to, to say. Honestly, VP looked like coming into this, they absolutely should have had overpass. You know, great map for them. Probably their favorite at the moment. Bit of a shame to see it go. You could argue ancient. Potentially, it's neither here nor there at this point because Mongols have got one official on it in the past three months. And, you know, if you go deeper than that, there really is not a lot of uh, tape for this team, not a lot of experience on this one. Just kind of stop playing it, I suppose. But maybe, indeed, it is kind of a catch-off towards the tail end of last year. They had a fair amount of repage in there. It's tough to say. Regardless... It shouldn't have been this much of a challenge, you know, for VP yeah. to get this one over the line. That's our spot. They really are. Being that great. So Mongols are only two rounds away. Lose this round here as well for Virtus Pro, and that could be curtains. That could be it. Caught M4. Famas for Jane. Not a lot of utility, but an opening kill, which they'll take every day of the week. Blitz gets caught through the smoke. That's not the start they wanted. 9-10 holding for the boost. With 1 minute 20, all goes quiet. The Mongols losing that initial fight. They don't really know where to go now. Grouping up outside of B, it would seem. Another smoke at Monster makes life difficult, though, doesn't it? They're still going to go in. It's that bomb, though, man. Oh, my God. The flashes are so effective from both sides. Everybody blinded. However, it's VP that come out on top. Once everything is said, I'm done. 9 10 looking to save. He heard some footsteps around here. Little does he know. They've gone flying past him. So he should be all good, actually, to get this orb into the next. He's got 2.7k. You know, it's worth it. It yeah. is most certainly worth it to save it. VP, though, staying hot on the heels. They can actually maybe go for a, 
a full buy here. He can drop. Mazzinho and the rest should be able to pick up maybe an investment. They'll, they'll really lack utility. That's the big thing. If they go for the, the, the more kind of firepower route, these last 10 seconds, I was going to say, should be okay. However, James got the right ideas. James really has the right idea. He's looking in. 9-10. What's your reactions like? What's the test like? Good enough. Passes with flying colors. And he will survive, so... Nice little sigh of relief at the end, but it is still now. Versus Pro, bit by bit, clawing their way back in towards this game. Pause called. Second for Mongols. So they desperately need to make sure they do not allow Versus Pro to tie this game up. They're getting close. They're getting very close. Yeah, Mara gets in towards the mic here. He knows that taking away this map absolutely changes the entire story of the series. It gives him such a good opportunity. Many would even consider maybe the underdogs in towards this matchup. We don't. We're big fans of the Mongols, but this map specifically, like we said, VP have been one of the best on in the world. The Mongols are doing so well to make it a you know, one that they can work with. Rather than dropping over, a bit of Utah picked up a 9-10. And Amazia just left with a Tech-9, sadly, for him. But he's still a buy around it, so at the very least, they've facilitated something here. Same move once again. In through connector. And then from here, it's actually where they struggle. Flash out. That gives a bit of the game away. Fame will know that there is presence. At the bottom end of Banana there. Flash for himself. No one spraying wildly on the Mongol side of things though. Not giving their game away. Tit for tat at the moment. Cat and mouse. There it is. Oh, fame. Brother. That's so unfortunate. I think there was a flash that came over. But the T side, at least I hope so. Nonetheless, Electronic also blinded up. Jame again, the only one on the defense. He just ever so slightly round that corner while blinded. That's so unfortunate. Techno catches two. And Mongols, number 12, is right there, right for the taking. They've just got to get past the goat of Norbert, and they will do absolutely that. Techno, 4K, not quite. 3K is good enough. Big, big round to be taken. It's an opening kill, right? It gives them all the space up via Banana. Aim just gets caught before you know it. Round done. So quick. This kill here. Then they can just kind of all jump towards the A side and overwhelm with numbers. That's exactly what they do. Running through. I mean, as well. There's been a lot of question marks about what VP can bring towards this map. And times are starting to dwindle. Final time I'll use by the Mongols. They've got four map points to try and see this over. Versus Pro. They'll get a buy, but it's with loose terms here. Got a double M4, a UMP, and a double five seven. This absolutely that round there could have spelled the beginning of the end. This is not going to be an easy one at all for the Virtus Pro side to convert. Let's see, Mongols. This has been a really impressive overpass. Yeah, honestly, just you know, it doesn't necessarily blow your mind but definitely is uh really surprising here and, and it is looking to be convincing unless vp can run us back here but yeah super impressive thus far flip up high uh, close they are certainly close but he doesn't want to stick around he's one of only two m4s i guess the worst thing in that boost, if he died, he would have just, you know, dropped to the floor. And then someone have picked it up. So, it's okay. Fame. It's pretty sounded to pot flash this. And here it is. Beauty. Beauty of a flash there. By 9-10. Techno gets the easiest kill of the game, really. And already, one of those M4s is gone. Now, that is dropped, but it honestly is very unrecoverable. So, a lot of onus now. On the remaining four, and that one rifle of flip. The other thing is, well, they're running low on a, on a utility. One nade, one smoke. Oh, oh my god. Oh. 
Oh no, Sensu, yeah, make steps. Easily heard, easily dealt with. Mazzinio. Back into the 4v4, Mazzinio gets caught too. Not worked out in terms of timing, in terms of the look. Electronic also in the right place at the right time for VP. Leaving Mr. Techno. And 9-10 to do it all. Techno catches Electronic getting a little greedy. Flip, however, cleanly around the corner. The Tech-9 switch is quite clean. 9-10 left against two. Thinks he's going to have an easy B-bomb site here. Won't be the case. Norbert is in super, super deep. Not going to get checked at all. Easy kill for him. And an easy ninth for VP in the end. Weird round. Very weird round. I think... For me, it just feels like the Mongols get just a little bit too comfortable in the situation they're in. And they just over fight, over face. You know, I'm, I'm surprised Mazzino isn't aware of kind of where they were at. I don't what was going on. Right? I'm, I'm surprised he didn't get the trade there. But in the end, still an opportunity for VP to push this towards OT. Of course, buy back in for them. Same can't be said for the Mongols. No bomb plant, barely even the kills. Have not got the money really across the board. Yes, 910 can buy and blitz, but you know, bar that, it's where things do really get dire. Hero AK? Or is it going to be a full buy? Oh my, it is. Full buy going to come through. However, two of the most important rounds we've seen on this T side so far have come from these kind of low half buy situations from the Mongols. So I actually don't hate it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And so far, it's been working. Virtus Pro at this point, late in towards this, this game, they should be expecting it. Quick rush coming out from the Mongols, trying to get some keen control of the B water area. They will do so. 9-10, looking for a fight, but nobody giving him anything. Boost coming over. For Blitz here, again, got to be careful with the way that they're playing this one. Electronic crosses in, spots them out. That's the location of two, nine, ten. Now being seen as well, he nearly got in under the radar, but not the case in the NVP. Some good information gathered then and no one going down for it. Slow around here in the early part. Bit of damage being dealt towards Electronic, but not... A huge issue. Presence being shown both towards A and B. Bomb not committed though. In a very good position held here, in fact, by Techno. Already up towards long bathrooms. And they are going to full rotate over. Bomb in tow this time as well. Flash going to come out via long. Not going to commit to the fight though. It's all part of the ruse. It was checked by Jim. He spots nothing. They're grouping up. James should get a fight in just a moment. On this corner. These tech nines can be dicey. Flash on the swing. Oh, brilliant. Fame fights two. James delivers one of his own as well. On a platter. As Virtus Pro are about to take a 10th round. And that is a beautiful transfer. Absolutely ridiculous. James chomping for a bit more here. And they'll get it together. Double digits. VP. Still alive. And yeah, if they can tap into moments like that, then we're definitely on. Denying a bomb plant away is massive. So we're going to see now what can VP do with this opportunity they have given themselves. Certainly an easier said than done type situation. But against the Glocks definitely should happen for them. Yeah, nothing that Mongols can really do. I think they're just looking to group together and uh, send it. Yeah. Well, yeah, this round is kind of one of those classic attack pause while calling the attack pause. Have a little conversation. Obviously, can't bring the coach in, but the team can have a little look in. Fame, will have spotted them out. Just going to go back towards side. That isn't going to overextend. I like this. Oh my god, you took him down, but too late. James going to drop a smoke of his own. Plays anti. Let's avoid it and lines them up. Mows them down. Oh, James. Hello. Beautiful work from him. Three to his name. Electronic gets two of his own as well. And Virtus Pro now make this one round to push it towards OT. 
They look dead in the water on their own map pick, and they've now absolutely come alive. But can they? Can they push it towards OT? Or a Mongol is going to steal it away at the final hurdle. The million dollar question, sir. We'll see. This is really, really intense stuff now. Mongols, insurmountable pressure. What do they have in store for us? Again, going to move quickly into the B water. Didn't work for them the last time out. Was a weirder buy, I suppose. Now they've got the AKs working. Slight variation coming in in the fact that Blitz gets super aggressive. 9-10. Oh, he tries for a frag. He loses his teammate. Almost loses his own life. This time they're much more ready for the spam through the wood there. 9-10 again looking for an opener here. Super, super risky stuff. Flip around the back of that pillar. Could just guess the right direction and drop the half HP. 9-10. Oh, my. Slow encroachment in. Going to catch one. It's now all about the trade, which never comes. Oh, they don't even take the peak. So he's able to drop back with a clean 4v4. This round's still opening up. Still. A possibility. I mean... Tech going to have a little look. Doesn't commit to jumping up, which is smart. The jump peak for information, but he still leaves him very vulnerable, surely. James Orp can hit that. Mongo up on high, has crossed and a leg shot. Blitz, a lucky man, stay alive. Nadal come over, but it goes deep. Molotov out be timed. Tech is up close here. He might just catch one off guard. He does. Beautiful stuff. Flash isn't good enough. Fame's going to fall. Oh, surely not. And it's all a ruse. Look at the bombs going. They're too late towards B. The plant will come through. That is a beautiful fake out from Techno. Oh, Norbert. Quick find from him, though. Brings it back to a doable situation. Absolutely has to be doable here. They've got the kits. That's about all they've got going for them. Both of them moving in from Heaven as well. It's all a guessing game. Heaven is completely open. Sensu, though, for its 24th kill. So brave. 9-10. Capitalizes absolutely wonderful stuff coming round from the mongols 13 11 it is hard fought in the end it is close but they will be so happy to have stolen that one away nobody maybe not even them expected them to take the overpass there and they managed to get it done oh my goodness gracious Siri. mirage our map number two mongols of course with a map under their belt already of a life in the server they need to continue things in towards the second. Find that form once fourth. Very slow pistol here. Bit of presence shown towards B. Not a lot towards A, but it looks like A is where they want to finish as they wrap in through mid. Techno getting away with a lot here. Boosted up. I mean, little does he know, he could very easily get in behind Sensi with a big find on the B250 as well. Flip. Yeah. Out in the open, tries to get away. It's Mazzinio with the two-piece, in fact, on both those CT players, as it were. They weren't quite in, but Toll Booth, beginning of CT, nonetheless. Four versus two as the bomb goes down, and Fame can't really do very much from here. His position given away by that kill. I wouldn't be against the save. You know what I mean? Like, you've just been completely battered on A there by the Mongols. Yeah. Nice, spot on. Shot from Norbert. Not a bad attempt either. As Fane finds one, it's just a shame that they don't really have the kit to work with. Mazzinio looking around. Any more at the tail end, it won't make a difference to the round, but he'll take all the consolation kills, making sure there's nothing to work with. That'll be that. Mongols, really good start from them. Really solid to see. Coming towards this one. Take control once again. Showcase their individual ability. Like you said, Techno got away with a hell of a lot. In through mid, boosting himself up. Never should have been given all those luxuries. And everything just slotted itself in towards this it's place. Basically, a full contact play coming through. Very limited and minimal utility used. But, my God, was it a successful round. That's his bro on the back foot from the get-go. Not how they wanted to come in towards Mirage with. Trying to cook something up here, though, with the force buy. Curious to see what they have indeed figured out. The Mongols contacting round through ramp. 
quickly. Ooh, Blitz. He was in the money. However, Electronic gets the better of him. Surely the Molly will drop him here. The bullets do the job. But he was a goner. Another one comes around here. Mongols looking good. Sensu in particular, lovely and crisp in these early rounds. Some really clean shots out from him. Down to Jamin Norbert. And again, no uh, arguments against saving here. Wouldn't be angry. I don't think that's what they're going to go for, but it's half and half, isn't it? Exits maybe for Norbert. James seems to be slowly backing away. Away. Yeah. They were it, at least looking like they were tempted to just stay around for exits. Thankfully, they don't opt to do so. Five zero in the scout. We'll stay alive. It's basically all they've got to work with. Not a huge fan. I'll always say it. But the force buyers on that CT side and... This round's a kind of a prime example of why they barely even scratched the surface, to be honest. One kill with a 5-7 for Electronic, and, and that's it. And he gets very, you know, immediately traded. Doesn't really have that much impact in the grand scheme of the round. I've got a pistol dropped over towards Jame. Norbert gets one of his own. Nobody in through apartments, and that will be the Mongols 2-0. to zero. Only the one casualty. No complaints at all. And they should get a third here without too much of a competition. Where we're at the moment. Mongols are in a, a very happy place. They're loving life in the server. That one kill, like we said, didn't really have too much impact in the grand scheme. They're starting to have the money to work with, so the Mongols should get three. Not too much. Sweat off the back. We'll see, though. James Scar can attempt something. Maybe might be able to claw them back into it. Pop shot through mid. They're going to give up that control for the most part. Yeah, it might not be the right move, to be honest, because, again, Mongols putting some decent pressure on middle. Using a lot of utility here. Are oh, the Asian squad. Slow build-up. Unsure of what VP may well be doing in this round. It is more of an alien coming in from the defenders. Sensu goes digging. Clearing angle by angle. 9-10 on that bomb. Keep your eyes on him because quite close around the corner is Fame with a 5-7. Backed up by Jame. Yeah, it's a dangerous setup. Molotov's going to go down low. Doesn't disturb Electronic's positioning. Norbert gets a catch onto Sensu in at short. There goes Electronic with the timing. Getting a quick trade. They are being overwhelmed here. 9-10 left low. Nade finishes him off. And Techno 4K is all alone. Making plenty of noise here as well. They're not giving him the peaks. 30 seconds remaining. He's got a bomb to retrieve. And he has to take some difficult fights. There is a bit of a thread of the needle. But he cannot find the head shot. And VP with a big steal. That's a massive round to be taken. I, I don't really know what goes wrong there for Mongols. Every single fight that's taken. VP are fighting guys, you know, who've got their back turned. Or coming on towards them sideways. I mean, I, I don't really know. If there's miscoms or something coming through the Mongols, but they were all over the place. Even something as simple as, you know, these two plays here, not even clearing the close angles absolutely cost them. So a very, very weird round of Counter-Strike that Mongols lose. Thankfully, they can dip back into the buy, but they've given guns over towards Virtus Pro for free and a round which never should have happened. Fair play, though. VP, they are the sort of rounds that can absolutely change the tides of momentum in your favor. A lot of presence being shown in through mid. You got Jane, Fame, and Flit all with a bit of presence. Molly comes over. First swing. Galil will find it and Tech will deliver as well. So Mongols right back to it. Yeah. Uh, again, really solid stuff from them. Fighting individually, playing confidently, not suddenly turtling in on themselves and letting VP control the game after a half by win like that. Absolutely love to see it. Can they convert this one over the line, though, is the question. Electronic is oh, in a really, really good spot to deal with them here. They'll all come creeping through the smoke, however. 9-10, trying to be a distraction. It works pretty well. Jame also spotted out. Mazzinio does get bested. Still on. Yep. Mm, Got to be careful. You see that little pull away from the CT peak. It's 4v2, but you don't want to be the guy that ruins the round. Norbert gets caught. 
in the worst possible spot. And it's just Mr. James here with the scope, slowly looking for a way out. And that kill might just give it to him. Misses the shot and will go down eventually. Yeah. Ah, that's rough. That's very, very rough indeed. Waited all that time, but they still get the better of him. Okay, so Mongols in a really legit position now. VP. Rifle rounds, not going their way, man. They're really struggling here. Rifle rounds have looked dicey, to say the least. Double M4 and an orb. It's a bit of a weird buy to try and kind of back yourself with, you know what I mean? Like, you're leaving yourself so yeah. vulnerable if this one falls flat. Mongols don't really feel that much pressure in these situations, but for VP, you lose this round. Mongols take a three-round lead. They then probably get a freebie off the back of it too because your econ's broken. And before you know it, this is a seat out of the Mongols that can already push towards five, six, one scorelines. At that point, that's already a conversation in itself of saying what is going on at VP. So this buy for me feels quite ballsy. I guess for Lost Bonus, going to hope for a bit of a miracle. These rifles got a lot of work. Forty-five seconds. It all goes quiet. There comes Norbert though with a wild push forwards. Nearly a double for him. Not quite, however. That bomb now has been spotted. The jig may be up. Thirty seconds left to get rolling. Another kill as Sensu Ooh. was on a solo play. Oi vey, what is going on here? Nine ten. Really make difficult work of this so far for the Mongols. He's left all alone, and what is he going to be able to find from here? Nothing is the answer. My goodness, Mongols really struggling in these half yeah, situations. Yeah, absolutely. The kryptonite is just these low by round. I, I don't know what it is. The way in which they approach it is so different to a, you know normal gun rounds. Normally very confident on the gun rounds. They're flying in towards fights. They're backing each other. They're playing as sort of a pack, and it, it works well, but... When it comes to these lower by rounds, they're constantly getting caught off guard. So many times there where they just don't even expect people set up in, in these positions. The big, big kryptonite for me as well seems to be in and around getting out of Palace. That's the one that's letting them down. Electronic is just playing a variety of positions around wood that is enough to catch the Mongols off guard. They're going to go back for a force by their own, the Mongols. AK, Galil, a few upgraded pistols. It, it's, it's not great. But maybe salvageable. They won three rounds like this on overpass. Two of which were on the T side when they really needed them. So I'm not going to count them out just yet. But yeah, I don't know. VP have been given. The two rounds have been given here have been gifted by the Mongols. Just overcomplicating the situation massively. Oh my god, fame. That is absolutely ridiculous. What a transfer. And a flawless round coming through from Virtus Pro. I've got to see that again from Fame. That was monstrous. Yes, they're swinging out with pistols, but that is delightful. Incredible. Absolutely incredible stuff. And a really solid round for VP to get their foot in here. But yeah, we're going to see it again. First two line, it's kind of the third. And you know, all this is at range as well is the yeah. thing, guys. Like, it's so hard. So, so hard to have that kind of spray control, you know? Damn. VP, close the gap exponentially and leave Mongols with no cash. So this is immediately panic stations for the T side. VP looking to take over the game. Norbert ready and waiting with the nade. The Molotov. Ooh, it's uh, maybe a little bit late. They do have to be careful not to get overwhelmed here. Not looking likely, though. Norbert even finds one on the USP. 
lead taken by VP, of course. VP are back in a very strong position at the moment. This is pretty solid. Just to be said, and, you know, we all we spoke about it with the Mongols. I feel like I've gifted them a couple of opportunities. That round, of course, expectations are pretty tempered, but Virtus Pro, the two rounds they were gifted, they've utilized well. It's given them stability in terms of their economy. It's kind of reinvigorized the, 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 this, this team quite a lot. They've got so much momentum in their sails now. It's working. Flash is beautiful. Senzu will get one for free, but instantaneously answered back by Fame, who looks for two. Always good for it. Feels as Jame will deliver as well. Now this is Virtus Pro firing on all cylinders. They have indeed awoken. Maybe figuring out the Mongols or maybe just remembering what they are capable of. Techno, a cheeky move here through the smoke. However, Jame. Oh, he distracting away a little bit and Electronic knows what's up. Make sure Techno ain't getting away with nothing. Mazzinho. What have you got for us here? He's slowly encroaching in towards the mid-area, but nobody around, no fights, no easy kills is ultimately what he's looking for. Any 3DBs he'll take, but I don't know if he's going to be given the luxury. And I don't really know if he's going to save here as well. So much time to try and burn. Not the easiest. Be caught in a second. Makes his way up. Does he clear TV? Does. Ho oh, ho. I shit on Norbert. Does get deleted. And this is the bomb on his back. But let's be honest. A 1v4 surely feels out of the realm as a possibility. Molotov well, out towards backside. Swing. And a miss. Oh my god. Jesus Christ. What is that shot? What is that? Fame's 12 and 4, by the way. He is loving life. We spoke a lot about Flip, but Fame was also somebody who back in the tier two days used to absolutely cook on this map as well prior to being picked up by VP. And he is showing it. Playing out through short here every single round and always feeling like he's good for a couple of kills. It's just that reliability from him, which is what makes him so important to VP. Beautiful stuff. Five to three is a nice two round lead and probably going to be a sick there as well because the pie is not great for the Mongols. Lovely finds, though. They're looking good on the BP side. The pace picked up by the Mongols, finding one kill. I was going to say zero success, but unfortunately, uh, fame, of course, let me down. But it's all good. Six coming round. VP threatening a pretty scary scoreline here. No bomb plant there. They are keeping the tension to a minimum at the moment, playing with their best foot forward. Very, very confident stuff. Mongols mean while timeout first one for them in fact just as the half starts to get away from them so a lot of pressure into this right yeah yeah absolutely this rifle has to be converted and you can see why Mara wants to get on the mic this is such an important round lose this and Virtus broken spiral so positively tail end of this half where it can mean the similar story that we had map one but you know in reverse right that nine three half out from the Mongols was all the foundations they needed to lock that map in place. And so far, what we're seeing out of Virtus Pro, it could be the same. The big thing for me is the two half by rounds that Mongols have lost. That's what it feels like. It's, it's absolutely killing them in this situation. Ah, oh, man. We'll see. What have the guns got for us? All about a 9-10. He's been a little quiet, but T's had opening Mirage. I can give him... A little bit of leniency. It's pretty tough in comparison to the CT side. Either way, though, like you said, right? You highlighted this is very much must win. Fake out over the top? It seems to be the case. So much utility coming out of just a couple players, really. Let's see. Interesting smoke there from VP, actually. No one's going to use it, but I think it certainly does slow you down a bit. Ooh, maybe it was for the nade play there. Either way, as I said, a fake out up through con come two. They're set up decently well, but if good timing is found here, then maybe there's a couple of kills. Or oh, Sensu tracking flit, still going to win the fight. 
He was definitely a goner, though, because it's electronic that was hidden away in the corner of jungle. Blitz takes him. Bomb going down. 9-10 to pick off game, and the bomb is confirmed. The even scenario short-lived, however. Norbert picks up the orb to see if he can cook something up. 9-10 has got many open angles to work with. Molly forces him back. The bomb not planted for Blitz, it has to be said. Long range spray down does not work for him. Smoke going in, 9-10. Surely not a chance at this one. Through the smoke even, he will be finished. And VP, despite a shaky mid-round, hold on. Oh, man. This is this kind of back and forth scenario that we're finding is there's opportunities here for the Mongols, but they're just not converting them. Another round for VP. Retake successful. All in all, really nicely done. And, and, you know, that post barn, I, I think it just comes down to, like you were kind of talking about, it wasn't set up for them well. One thing that really felt like it killed them as well at times was that overextension in towards jungle. The swing coming through and flip being gifted the kill the way he was. It just feels like a little pedantic for me where you, you don't need to be going that aggro. Yeah, like we said, a real important gun round, not going in the favor of the Mongols. So here we find ourselves, it's a 7-3 scoreline. And already not a bad position. I think we've had a little crash here for James. Thankfully, not during the rounds, so we're okay. End of the round stuff, so just a little reboot and we go again. I don't think it's going to make too big of a difference, of course, as I love his weapons and all the rest. So as crashes go, it, it could be way worse. It could. Jane would know all too well about I know, that. I was well. going to say it could be a key <laughs> round uh, at the biggest event of the year. You know. <laughs> Bless him. Yeah, but it's all good. It's all sucks. good. You know, he, he sort of knows what's up now. And I'm sure this one is not as tilting. So he'll be all good. Uh, a slowdown in the play, though may well be exactly what the doctor ordered for the mongols they can just cool off a bit and get themselves into a clean headspace seven five would be nice would be nice definitely workable kind of need at least one for my money to be honest a quick move up short it would seem have at least been spotted however techno finds the first frag they are not slowing down here. Fame so blind. Mazzinio running into him. Mazzinio confused, I think, as to what is stopping him. And Fame gets away with all three. Oh, no. They've all rotated in. Not a chance. Fame does it again. 17 kills for the man. He's not died in a good two or three rounds here as well. Absolute ridiculousness. Just being gifted so many freebies now. And Fame is just ever reliable. Ah, oh, we kind of were saying it sort of half-jokingly always good for a couple, but this is now getting kind of ridiculous. Mongols cannot seem to scratch the surface. 8-3. We did a 9-3 first half of the first map was good foundations, and this one, VP, is already more the same. They could be about to match it. Jane finds the first already. Blitz will answer back with one point of HP. It's not going to be easy, and the nade might just do it. He might be in trouble. No, he will survive briefly. 9-10, goes one for one. Jane trying to maneuver around lower stairs and one has made their way out. He will get caught. This is such a weird round. Oh my God. They're not seeing each other. Ooh. Tech, I didn't see him. Wait, did he? He did. Oh my God, thank God. Flit, Flit almost saw him as well, to be fair. Flit gets a bit unlucky. <laughs> oh, but with the off. Oh, you're joking. Okay. okay. He's going to get away with that. But still. Kind of ridiculous. Oh, and he guesses the wrong bomb site. Oh, no, no. no. Oh, okay, no, okay. No. Okay. Oh. okay. Yeah. A bit of nades that gave it away, to be fair. Oh. Put it down to the one versus one before the bomb's even gone down. A wild swing from Techno and Norbert gets it done. Oh, my goodness. What is that round? But a great half coming in from VP. Eight in a row. A formidable showing here on Mirage. Should be enough for them. But you never know against the Mongols. See you in the second half.
Jesus, that's big. Oh, wow. That is quite something. Can you imagine playing with that? Oh, surely that's not enjoyable. Now that's a good size. Yeah. Nice and small. Maybe not small enough. Ladies, I couldn't help it over here. I think I may have exactly what you need. Okay. Why don't you go ahead and show us? Sure. I'll send it over. I call it the White Hammer. Oh my god. What the fuck, dude? You're so disgusting. What? Who plays with a white crosshair? Terrible visibility. Let's play later. I'll show you. I ain't going anywhere near that thing. Welcome back round. The Mongols looking to stand strong in the second half. Their map pick going south thus far. VP and Fame in particular really looking great there on their defensive side. Well, we'll have to see, right? This has been a very one-sided showing. But then again, so was overpass. And there was moments where Virtus Pro opened the door for an overtime shout in that map. And obviously never came to fruition Mongols, pissed around on the CT side, a necessity. And then we need a lot more before we even remotely get close to a conversation about OT. This has been Virtus Pro in complete control. No two ways about it. Flip. Little looking via ramp, doesn't spot a lot. Seems like this wants to end over in that direction of B. And there's actually one player playing back side, so they probably should be okay. VP just playing it slow. Not wasting any time. Electronics only got the one flash as well, so we'll see. Smoke comes over the top. They go in ahead of that contact flash to try and work with. Oh, it's perfect techno. However, is able to stay alive as well as taking a kill with him. Sensu has to be careful to do the same now. Little risky taking these fights. 9-10 though through the smoke. Pretty aggressive. Can he drop anyone here? No, he cannot. It's just down to Mazzinio. In the 1v3, double swing is successful. And VP got the pistol. Oh, man, they were right place, right time, but the shots, the execution, yeah. just not quite on the mark, not quite quick enough. Yeah, honestly, super, I mean, one of those things where that can be quite demoralizing because you had the right idea and because you had the opportunity to make that stick of that you don't, that's going to hurt, really does. Tough stuff, but... Decent round, of course, has to be set over towards Versus Pro. We can give them their credits. They're now up to 10 7 round lead. And ah, uh, this is pretty sad. The Mongolian side. Yeah, I've gone for a force here. Scout MP9, which gets very close to the first and will get it, thankfully. In the end, made to work for a little bit. Norbit might overlook under. Pa 
Alice because mazzini has got one. He's desperately trying to stay alive, and he will. They're actually making this work somehow. Mental. Absolutely mental stuff. Can they get the bomb down here? Oh, there's a denial opportunity, and he actually manages to deny it away. It's not the player from CT, but all the same, James is suddenly alone. What a wild little move coming round. He's left on 16 HP. Mongols with a big, big, big win on the horizon here. Absolutely no way they drop this for my money. Just a case of whether James survives or not. The answer will be no. And Blitz rushing to get this AK. Ooh, didn't quite catch. No. I don't think so. I don't think I so. I want to say no. Right on the wire. It will make a big difference, though, getting an AK early into this half. I want to say no. I think he was close, but close with no cigar. But hey, a round's a round, so you're taking all the same. Yeah, got the confirm. Didn't get the didn't get the AK. Ah, uh, unlucky, unlucky. But fundamentally, not the end of the world, right? It's still a, a fine position they're in, right? You look where they are now. They've kind of forced into an MP9 and a scout, basically, and they've made it work. And now they do put a little bit of pressure on towards the shoulders of Virtus Pro, which is what we're seeing here, right? Timeout going to be called the first one as well, where we have to look at this and say, hey, what are they now got to offer for us, right? We need to see Virtus Pro responding kind. They obviously are going to go for a force because they kind of have to. Sort of how their economic situation uh, finds themselves. They don't really get a decision. They've got to scout themselves, a few got a pistols, and that's about it. It's not the greatest, but it's probably manageable. At least to make it a bit expensive. I don't know about the round. If they get a bomb plant, I think they could be okay. The old classic. Bomb plant and a couple of kills. Blitz getting quite aggressive. Decent information gathered for him uh, down middle. Just has to be careful now, to be honest, because he is by himself. Yeah, even a one for one there is going to be dangerous. He immediately drops back. Techno also nearly taking one in the cranium. So we're, we're a little giddy on the Mongol side, despite only being on the four rounds. For sure. However, laying down the law, Techno goes creeping round for a frag. Eight comes through, little bit of damage, not too problematic. Deagle spamming, not finding. And Jame, with that scout being tagged down low, not sticking around too long. My God, that is laboured. A, a kill's a kill. We take him all the same, but ooh, he had to work for that one. I was like 25 bullets minimum used in that one, but uh, it has left the flit and Jame. Alone, they haven't got a kill yet, and I don't think they're going to be gifted one because they're probably dead, as we say, right? Jane falls, flit left alone here with a deagle, 25 seconds, he doesn't want to stay alive, and he won't be given the luxury of it. 9-10, we'll see him off, flawless, little giddy like you said, but in the end, seen off pretty simply. And this is now the star, right? Mongols wanted a chance in towards this second half in towards making this map theirs and taking a 2-0. They had to come out towards the first gun round and kind of force my round, make a stick, and they have. And they are broken the econ of VP as well, which is huge. Deep Molotov to come round, keeping the VP contact move at bay for now. I think they will have some presence towards B. They're also, yeah, hiding around here in the underpass. I do like this move. Maybe someone will come their way, but... Mongol's not taking any chances. Double nade. Oh, nearly finishes off fame. Softens him up at the very least. Cheeky little spam. Oh, my... Oh, yep. There you go. Some more damage coming in. Blitz, meanwhile, gonna get caught at the top end of middle. 9-10 to stand strong. Electronic is quickly up into the ladder room, looking for a catch. The Glock lets him down. However... Flit out on B, gonna get the plant in with a zero investment round near enough. And maybe we're on. If you can find another heady, we most certainly are playing in a round bench as well. The opportunity was there. Robbed of it, unfortunately. Nade leaves Jame both alone and low. He's just gonna back off and not even give them the kill, really. Yeah, no point. Doesn't want to feed the SMGs. He did uh, 
Get off the top for half a second, but yeah, not going to make a big difference. Oh, my God. Jane. Oh, oh he died. <laughs> Why did he peek? I don't know. But he does die in the last split second there. Just check if they fall off short. A little weird. A little wonderful, but one goals are starting to make a little move here. This is exactly what we saw at a VP on overpass in reverse, right? Where they start to come back a little bit, but it feels like there's a little bit more legs behind this to the Mongols. Their CT side so far, for the most part, has been okay. They're very proactive. They're very aggro. And at times, that, that is the perfect way to kind of counter VP, who can naturally be very slow. All right, let's see if they can keep this rolling, though. That's the one thing. VP have got so much breathing room thanks to that first half and the pistol pickup. Getting boosted in. Spots the back end of Sensu. And that is a big frag to be taking. However, trade is there. You know where Electronic's at. Molly going in. It's a big fight out from Palace. However, good read from Fame to be ready for that fight. It leaves 9-10 all alone. And he does not know where to look. VP may well be doing it here. Just Blitz and Techno 4K. I think, to be honest, your only real option, unless another kill comes their way, is to save. I think you're right. Gonna have a little look in here, Blitz. Jump in. Oh my god, flying down. The final electronic. They're gonna give this a go. They shouldn't, because Jake's got other ideas, but Techno has a kit. Molly two flashes. And technically enough time. It looks like he's being called off. He pulled back to save him. This will be another round going the way of VP. So well done. Kills across the board. Flip fame, Jame and Electronic. And make that one work for them. It did look like the Mongols wanted to give that retake a go, but the second Jame finds that kill, it basically kills that idea dead in its tracks. Now we find Virtus Pro only two rounds away. Both coaches getting back on the mics here. Timeout going to be called by the Mongols, their penultimate one here. Virtus Pro not under that much pressure, but this is definitely big question mark. It has to be said now about the Mongols. Have they got anything left in the locker? This is their map pick, and so far it's, it's not looked like it consistently across the board. Like you said, that first half, very, very good, and we haven't seen enough yet on the second for us to... Maybe give this a chance. Yeah, and I mean, not the most complicated round in the world as well from VP is the thing. Um, relatively simple. But we'll see. I think the Mongols, at the end of the day, just trying to find themselves some rounds to keep the dream alive. This next map is going to be an absolute banger, so I am kind of glad that it looks like we're we're ending up over there, to be honest. Fantastic decider for this series. Ancient, of course, maybe if you are unawares. 9-10 to open things up. Mongols not quite done just yet. Yeah, not on Ancient just yet, buddy old pal. Maybe a chance. Blitz. Breaking his legs a little bit as he looks around for some information, but through mid. Not a lot of presence being shown here by Versus Pro until Norbit pops up and gets one for free. Blitz gets caught. An important kill because he finds it falls away and doesn't really reveal now what the idea is Versus Pro but Senzu gets some very important top minute information. He'll just double away. Not going to give over those fights. Nice and simple. 9-10. He has to hit this first one. And preferably fall away too. Looks good, though. I like his spot. And I think, indeed, they might not be expecting him to be so brazen with a, an angle like this. Slow encroachment in. Are you looking for a jump across? Oh, no, it's a double peek, and he lands a leg. That's unfortunate. Would have been great to find a kill. I mean, they lined up for him as well, but the bullet's just not quite succinct enough. Techno, they know what's up. They know that these boys love a good jump out through the smoke four versus two to essentially see it over the line make it one said to no option but to save vp 
showing why they are deserving of the victory here. Really, really clean T-side this far. Absolutely. In the same vein, we spoke about on overpass, right? Mongols have done great preparation for Versus Pro on their favorite map, showing kind of how good they can be, their preferences and all the rest. VP have done exactly the same here. Senzu. I mean, he's actually having a little look in. Oh my God, he's picked up a kit. Surely not, because he's going to find one. Oh my God, I thought for a second, but he isn't able to cross. Jame will deny that. And that's probably more or less the final nail in the coffin. Map point on your opponent's map pick. That third map looming here. And a really solid Mirage out from Virtus Pro. Jame has called a bit of a masterclass here, especially into the second half as well, because the T side... Has been a little wacky. The Mongols just don't seem to have a read on them. Flip. <sighs> Nearly ahead. Peaks around the corner. However, <laughs> There it is. He was after a fight and pff, fantastic stuff. Massive entry. Certainly not been uh, the loudest game out from him. He's not necessarily been required. You know, he sung his praises at the top of the map, historically speaking. And, well, he might be the one to close it, I suppose. It's all about fame on this one, however. So another comes around for Norbert, VP, just making it look easy here. This second half, man, especially, is... Really, really played expertly. Where do they go from here? That's the question. Three remaining for the Mongols. Anything left in the locker? Virtus Pro looking like they want to end, end on the A site. It'll come through. Decent damage in all fairness, but now electronic on the cross court. There's the first. Blitz with the liver. That's important. Look for a second. Not giving it. Oh, and Norbert. Beautiful work from him. It's a fun ass left to do it all. But now into a one versus one. Hang on a second. I think we maybe thought this one was done. Anything else though for Techno? First two aren't bad, but it is flip. Looking to try and swing in towards a fight as well. Does cut noise. Looks round and flip will find. That'll close it. 13 to 6. Virtus Pro far from done in this series. Far from done in ESL Pro League. And a third map required to decide who is going to move forward in towards the quarterfinals. You do not want to miss it. Sit tight. We'll be back in just about 10. Map here of this already absolute movie of a series. This one for all the marbles. Winner will be taking on complexity in the quarterfinals. Again, many would see that as a winnable matchup considering the teams that find themselves directly invited to the quarters. Mongol CT start, VPT start. And Blitz probably going to be tested in just a moment's time. Five stack in through elbow. First contact. Norbert jumping across. Yeah, Blitz having a lot of trouble. He is surely a dead man walking. Can he get a kill before he falls? The answer is no. Norbert sees him off. That's a shame. Flash came over the top that was super clean for him. Oh my god, Sensu, you've got to be joking. They watch for it. He gets away with two nonetheless and dips back into the smoke from whence he came. Advantage bagged, but it's short-lived. Let's see here. 910 in towards A main. Has to stay alive. Flash comes in to buy space for that bomb plant. It will indeed commit to it. Another find onto Sensu. 910 left low. Not looking good where it was once. Looking really, really strong. 910 creates some space out onto the side itself. Just trying to catch ahead, but VP fully respectfully not giving fights. Techno with the Julies will close the gap. He's been spotted out now. He's got to get going. Tap onto the bomb. What a flick across. Fame deals with him quickly, thank goodness. And 910 remains completely alone. Fame knows that he's not on this bomb. They will just be able to toy with him here at the tail end of the pistol. Can he get any kills on the way out? Oh, yes. Nice spin around. Fair enough. And there you go. Okay. Kill bonus for 910. He takes a little <laughs> dolphin dive at the end, though, as the bomb goes off. Like, uh, see that meme of like Peter Griffin just flying down the stairs? Kind of the way it looked like there. Arms behind his back. But 
Hey, he's taking yeah, a couple yeah, of kills. Yeah. Good for the stats. The kick's really good round to be taken there. Actually, very well composed by Virtus, bro. Especially off the back of this play here. When Senzu slips the net and gets two, that's a very easy time for a lot of teams to panic. But Virtus Pro do anything but. Very calm. In that situation, they just slow things down. They get a bomb down. And they set up the post plant to themselves. It's well played. I think they've really given themselves a good way back into Techno. Hang on a moment here. Surely this is not what I think is going to happen. And we're coming through. They're trying to make something of this. Techno has a need, which potentially he could bank off the wall. He will. But it banks back. It catches a pixel. Oh, you hate to see it. You do. That's a flaccid need. I think it's Just one way of putting it. Oh, yep. One of the many ways of all time. Sensu. Oh, if only there'd been a bit of support, a bit of backup. He finds a key frag, gets away with the AK in particular. However, they've split. I feel like you just got to bolster your defense here, guys. Get that AK with the rest of the pack. B would be the correct call. So at least they've got that going for them. And slowly but surely, Sensu is going to make his way over here, I think. Okay. 9 10. Hang on. Hang on a moment. Norbert dropped. Scout. Especially in this guy's hand. Especially with how that pistol went. Maybe he might be able to rip a couple more heads. Maybe, just maybe, we could be seeing another force being converted. This has kind of been a storyline we've seen all the way through. Flash, round that corner. Doesn't do any sort of damage. 9-10. Hang on, where are we going though? Why are we pushing in towards the fight? This is sure he's so risky. He will get a tag. Hang on, the pistol could bail him out as well. 5-7 will come round the corner. We'll get the first. Looking for more as well. Kneecap spotted of Jay. Might be a dead man walking here. Oh, what he is. Rips his head. Oh, I can't believe it. 9-10. I thought it was audacious to get pushing into the fight, but it's worked. And Flint just has to tuck his tail between his legs and save. And they might not even give him that luxury. He's got to be seen off. Brilliant. Oh, when he dies off the time, it could not have gone better there. What yep. a response yep. from the Mongols. His smiles all around. Ooh, they are one of the uh, few teams, you know, that commit to the continuous force buy, especially on that CT side, but they really do make them work. I'm not going to lie to you. Roll it back a few years, you know, with just the overconfident moves in the force buy. I think that's the thing. A lot of teams will maybe go into the force buy, place things a bit safe, a bit like, oh, well, maybe... We don't just want to throw this round away. It's so expensive and MR12 and all that. And the Mongols are just, you know, shooting from the hip. Cigar in mouth. Sunglasses on. Super cool. Flying in for those entries. And they make him work quite often, you know. 9-10. Maybe that kind of attitude will get the better of him in this round. An instant one for one. Mazzino holds the line, however. So we should be all good here. Swing and a fine for Zinio. Drops electronic, and that will be that. Techno and a flip. Anything at the tail end would be nice. He's now spotted though, so. Loses up, and Blitz will get a freebie. Nice and easy. Only the one casualty. Not going to complain at all. Mazzino, good work from him. Actually, a little bit of a rough series. It was the one of the. The stipulations I came in towards this series talking about was actually on land. Mazzino. It's a little quieter in terms of individual performance I mean, when he's in kind of the comfort of his own home or on boot camp or whatever. In the online games, right? It's a different story. On Lanny, doesn't always seem to get that comfortable that quickly. And uh, I mean, so far, this series actually has been the same. I think I'm right in saying heading in towards this one. Lowest rate performer on the Mongols thus far. But plenty of time to change the story here. 9-10. Easy one there. Sensu so going to play up close here. Could mow down a few. He does just that. There's presence coming in from the cave, which is dealt with by Jane, but ultimately a clean round as the Mongols swiftly up to three. Plenty of cash being built up here as well. So VP have got to put a stop to them and fast convincingly, you know, all that good stuff. It is a lot of pressure very quickly for the VP. Rifle by T-side off the ground, hopefully here. First round of the full gun to VP has to be good. 
They've got to get this T side going. So far, it's not been that great. Actually, one of the, the big differences that we've seen so far between this map and the others is actually that when we're seeing the Mongols win some of these low buy rounds, they're not taking that many casualties. Only one of the last two. This is so aggro and it's working. You can't fight fire with fire when it's the Mongols. You can't try and beat them in their own game of pace. They are always ready guns up for these engagements and it's working. It's one of the things, isn't it, with Ancient uh, as a map, you can't really neutralize the way that teams play it, right? There, there's a very flat approach. You're either passive and safe, playing heavy rotational base game, or you're getting aggressive and in the face of your opponents. And, and the key thing is that you have these kinds of approaches to other maps as well, but sometimes you have to adapt a little bit. It's like, hmm, how do we play around this team, around this particular player? On Ancient, as you can see, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Whoever you're playing against, what works for you works for you, and it can be very hard to counter of that there's a load of spots especially for this ct side that you can get yourself into where it doesn't matter if you know nico or donk or maybe a rain you know these great players on this map it doesn't matter where they are they're really gonna struggle to beat your angles and sensu at the perfect time proves my point it is stunning isn't it really nicely done from sensu there one fair enough the second Fair play, mate. But the third, beautiful, beautiful. Unable to trade a timeout called for VP. And actually, Dasa not really even getting that vocal. I love the team to speak a little bit first. James got on the mic a bit. But I think this is probably more than kind of one of those tack pauses, which is about, um, you know, the strategy or the game plan or anything of the sort. I think this is probably just about calming Virtus Pro down. Being a little bit all over the place and actually a little bit fidgety in terms of some of these fights over and not getting the good the right sporting utility and all the rest three round lead though really good this time once again gonna try and go quick met with a action air burst molotov wasn't even the right one if it had dropped they probably got a lot of damage but they don't techno forced out of excavation early here now i just got to smoke to try and deal with this Pitter patter of the Tech Nine behind the smoke. Nobody there though. VP falling back into their old ways. Nice and slow, nice and safe. But a mid round push here from the Mongols through Red Room could be devastating. We'll see. Oh, there's a lot of bodies around here for VP. It's a bit scary. And he's also on his own now. 9-10 though, in from Donut, sticking around, double kill netted, looking for more, and he delivers. The AK of James nowhere to be seen, the trade nowhere to be seen, but the fifth round in the hands of Mongols. 9-10, 10 and 2 by the way, just immaculate thus far. Might even get one more, potentially. Sensu gets James and Mazzino C off fame. Oh my god. The Mongols are cooking on gas right now. This is emphatic, really solid stuff. Granted a low buy round, but not even be given the opportunity to even scratch the surface of this deep defense out of uh, the Mongols. It is a really, really solid sign to see. This is beautiful. Everybody's hitting their shots. Everybody's stepping up to the plate and home runs left, right, and center. Four round buffer zone, back into a buy, but Fame's only got a Glock. Okay, so Fame. I'm sure. I don't know if I'm misreading this. I don't know if he's got a gun down somewhere, but Fame's only got a Glock. And then a triple AK and a Galil. There yeah, we go. Yeah. Mac 10. Okay, I'm going to say. Had to yeah. be in drop somewhere. It's probably just searching in the water. It's kind of hard to see. Hmm. Yeah. And we're not yet on the new patch. So there yeah, is no can't. little menu. I'll say that is very. You bet I might. Be helpful. Before you start flaming him in his head, it is. Well, it is kind of. I feel like if you're in one of the, you know, toxic kind of games where it's maybe getting a bit edgy, someone, you're going to ask for a drop, it's going to end up on the floor, and then someone else is going to yoink it. 
Oh, I'm gonna. I'm putting every, world record mouse one click yeah, speed on. I was on gonna say I was random gonna say drops every, the orb to his every mate. bone in Bumble. your body. You know. Yeah, I'm gonna be using. I can't like, see that happening in some games. I'm not gonna lie to you. We'll, I'm using we'll a bit. Aim labs to train to hit B and click bottom right to get that orb, man. <laughs> Second I see, can I get a drop orb, man? It is later. It's mine. That's the skill that they've removed, isn't it? The the snipe it out of the air skill. Yeah, do you know what? The, the E the button's not been working skills. properly for a while, man. I don't know what's going on, so I'm glad they've kind of made something up here. Back to the action, though. Tech is on fire. Maybe quite literally. He looks for a kill. Doesn't get it, but damage is good. 910's orb is close. And he is being wrapped through. Residio needed a kill there. And now that he hasn't, A site's open because they know he's the anchor. Very true. However, seven seconds. They could just send this here. We do have Sensu on the way to deny, and he will find the frag to win the round. Flit left. Oh, to save, and even that comes a little bit close, to be honest. But yeah, a, a really sort of tough look. VP just winding the clock down and then flying in. Really not an awful lot of... Uh, creativity to that round and also seemed like they were thin on the utility or actually no there was a slant smoke that came in they're just trying to get ahead of it i don't know a little disjointed from vp there i think you're right oh well oh wait, hang on hang on tech nine so oh, no not this sort of round boys this is the sort of round that can maybe change things electronic gonna get a double and in just a moment, there's maybe a chance that something can work out. Got himself a rifle. And now, of course, got the numbers too. Techno got to try and pull something out of the bag here. He's the only one towards B. And there's a lurk play. Hang on a second. Look at Electronic. He's getting in behind. He's going to get so much information. They do not need to commit towards B. And even when they wrap back round, 9-10, I don't think he's going to expect this. Knife out gets caught. I think that's around. I, I think Mongols just got to save it. I know it sounds weird, but... And they've got plenty of money. At the very most, play exits. I don't think a 2v5 retake's only pulled off. Yeah, I think that is completely fair enough. VP then, off the back of uh, Electronics solo play... Will find their seconds difficult to replicate. It's a half by round as well. The rules of engagement always different. But we'll see what they're able to find in the follow up. That's kind of the key thing. Can the Mongols answer back immediately? You know, 10 2 still looks pretty nice. But for now, saving what they have gets a good bolster to the cash. I think they'll be pretty happy with the fact that they're able to save themselves a bit of money. And of course, Sensu on that AK. Lost Man is 11-1 yeah. and one right now. So that's really going to make a difference with a guy that's fragging out like this. Very true. Very, very true. The two save. But yeah, that round all basically one off the back of Electronic. Double kill coming in through mid. Gets two of the Tech 9 and that's it. Basically, we'll see it again here. Just phase the smoke. Nice freebies. Very weird round. Lost and you see Mongols caught off guard like that. And he wraps all the way through. So a second put on the board, Virtus Pro. No need to panic, though, for the Mongols. They can reset. Plenty, plenty of cash in the back pockets, even still. Sensu's just shy 9k. So he's absolutely fine. While on a shelf smoke. Slow both sides down. 9-10 trying to play around it here. Doesn't want to overextend, so I'm going to dip away. Mazzinio. Nearly caught off by a bit of pre-fire there. Molly down, flash to back it up. No real bend here from Mongols. In fact, they try and get ahead of things, try and get a mental read with a B stack, but I don't think it's quite going to work for them. Smoke coming in towards Donut. Not really all that much, though. Yeah, the Molotov well-timed. Good damage. Blitz, however, loses his life. There is a chance to capitalize. Is Sensu the man to do it? Is it Techno that lies in wait in cave? Difficult to say. Sensu has to be careful. Can't go down here. He's still feeling confident for the fights. He's left incredibly low. 
40 seconds and a heavy, heavy spot of at least like three, I would say. Maybe even the bomb. It's a weird round to call, a weird round to predict. We've got Techno in deep, though. This is the big thing for me. Rotate coming through water at a slope towards ramp. That is perfectly timed. VP have to go through this, and surely it works against them. And Mazzinho, who's normally the anchor over towards the other side, finds himself here on B, ready to try and lock it down. He's full by, though. But it doesn't matter. 9-10 for two. Looks for three. Can't quite get it. Do they expect another? They might not. Bomb. Gonna go down. That's it. That's the round. It does not matter. Norbert is nowhere near. And the Mongols gonna claw one back. One of the scrappy rounds we've seen in this third map. But the Mongols convert it. Oh my god, Senzu, don't, yeah, don't lose the ore, but aside from that, really good, and a, you know, not even a, not a sigh of relief, uh, sigh of disdain there from Norbert, tough one to lose, but a great smoking towards ramp, and 9-10 plays around it perfectly, beautiful stuff, beautiful from the Mongols, and the 7th round converter, they've guaranteed a lead already, and so far in quite dominant fashion. Yeah, really, really solid look there from the Mongols. They do well in the chaos when you play those types of rounds. You have to be careful against these boys. I'll tell you that much for free. They really do perform well there. VP, plenty of cash to get going again. But locked out of B lane at this point. They've used all their smokes as well. As you can see there on the minimap. And you can also see, of course, down the side. I mean, all... The utility really has gone 30, 40 seconds into the round. There's really not a lot left. Sensu with a keen find round the corner onto a key player. Techno looking to be cheeky here. They just have to be careful, yep, yeah, not to get too ahead of themselves. Blitz standing strong. Mazzinio up close. Still looks pretty good, but another find for VP as they continue to thin the defensive numbers. Mazzinio in the molly. They were waiting to see whether anyone was playing up close. And now they've got that confirm. The only thing is, do they expect two now? If they were to re-aggress in front of their execute. Yes, they heard the Molly tick onto one. Do they expect the second in through cave? The third of 9-10 holding for rotations. And he might just be gifted them. Electronic here waiting in through mid. And Fame coming to join them. They're going to make a move in through cave. Blitz, got to get at least one will for free you can make that a second as well that's the bomb that's the round surely again 20 seconds james not long for this world most likely gets one rifle picked up but still a long way to go blitz is low but he's got to pick up the bomb and then plant as well oh my god that's close tags on towards 9 10 but it's blitz who sees him off eight to two vp are starting to crumble tail end of this map well, 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 it's problematic. It is very, very problematic indeed. VP, I don't know, man. It's, it's sort of wild to see, you know, the T side getting away from them. And the Mongols just keeping the action coming again on an individual level, able to compete massively. Electronic looks a bit comfortable, but he just does not have much support behind him. It's so close. It's so, so close to be fair to VP, but still not quite enough. James. Taking some early damage from somewhere. At the moment, with a minute 25. Having a little poke and prod both ways. Bomb is in the direction of B, but not committed. The Orb of James having a look over towards A. And again, nothing really being given up here. 9 10. That real first contact. He got. Mazzino in through Donut 2 and Techno once again. Cave control for him has been excellent so far. He's going to opt for a little bit more of a passive approach to it, however. As they're looking in via mid. No player playing on the corner of Red Room. Jame can post up, but he won't be getting a fight. Not for the moment. Apart from when he falls off. Timing actually could not have been worse. Mongols again going for the aggressive rotations here. unsure. VP trying to starve them of information. 35 seconds left to get a roll in here. This is absolutely ridiculous again from them, to be honest. Sensu up top. Double man set up here. Looking good. Able to secure one. The site itself might become compromised, but Blitz has got 
good timing for the double kill. They tunnel in on cave. Sensu with a quick change up and... Oh my goodness, VP, where are you? This is really dire right now. It's a massacre. It is. Oh, God, shame. Gets deleted. Oh, my God. This is a massacre. The Mongols are on fire. On absolute fire. This is beautiful. Beautiful stuff coming through. Lovely little one-two setup. It's not the most uncommon, but I think it's just the amount of numbers they've got over towards the site, which catches VP off guard. And a blitz, you know, super simple double from him. Virtus Pro cannot seem to find a thing on this T side. Final round of the half. Double Galil, double AK, an electronic on a Mac 10 and very limited util when it comes down to it. An execute might be tough and a uh, post one might be harder as well. Only one towards his A site though, 9-10. Couple of heroics he did early doors. At least one kill and to fall away alive. Maybe to give them a chance. 9-10. Flashed off the angle. Still sticking around though. Still confident. Big tag landed through the wall, but no kill for him as yet. The nade will see it off. Huge round here on the card for Mongols. If they can get it over the line. Blitz in from default looking good. Bomb hits the deck. And they are rolling through VP. Like it ain't no thing. Just up wow. to flit and not a chance. Wow, wow, wow. 10 to 2 in favor of the Mongols. Surely got to be enough to lock in that quarterfinal spot. Only time will tell. Catch you in a few. Future pros, knowing some bee smokes on Ancient can lead to success. So let's look at the classic short smoke. To throw this, stand in the doorway in the middle of this section. Aim at the tip of this leaf. Then throw the smoke. Pretty easy to be honest. From the same spot, you can also molly the pillar by aiming at the gap between the plant and the wall. A very easy but effective combo.
the Mongols looking to secure their spot. Absolutely incredible stuff from them in that first half. And, you know, we've had some pretty one-sided halves uh, as the crow flies in this game, but that is quite something and it feels to be in a spot already where it's not going to be recoverable for vp so we need the best looking version of vp we need fame back his seat yeah. inside for a performance from mirage has to uh also make an appearance here it begins with the pistol though let's see this has been pretty dire from vertus pro thus far the CT side might be able to pull it back in towards something. Maybe, you know, this is a map which generally a lot of people prefer the CT side on. Maybe that comfort might give VP an opportunity. But Mongols have been immaculate thus far. 9-10 for the first. Gets caught. Electronics, Julie's delete. But Senzu answers back well. Oh. Nade doesn't do as much as you would expect. It's Electronic behind Pillar that needs dealing with. He comes away with one. Ah, oh, that's all he's able to get. It's Jame there, four alone. The IGL, the man who does so much of the work and is all about the buy-in, all about the identity of VP. He's got to clutch up to save the game, it feels like. Blitz spotted. I don't rightly know where Jame is at just yet. He has managed to sneak in ever so slightly. Is it enough of a sneak, though? Spots out the first, knows the location of the second, and then just a game of timing blitz to see it off and may well start hammering it in. Quarterfinals right around the corner. Yeah, that might be one of the final nails in the coffin here in a map in which Virtus Pro have just not shown up on. The Mongols have massacred here, and this pistol, another prime example of it. 11 to 2. And a force buy, and probably the last hurrah. This is Virtus Pro. All chips to the middle of the fell. This is the all in poker call. Can we make this work? If the answer is yes, maybe we stay alive. Electronic will find the first. So, at the very least, not the worst start on this force buy, which has to be converted for VP to stay alive in the map, in the series. They draw first blood. Oh. Bit of noise made. It will have been heard. Nor but in the cubby, of course. But still, 910 going to dedicate to the uh, upwards angle. A little quiet from Mongols. Not just barreling on in. Looking to clear out cave here. Easier said than done. A deadly little setup. Sensu just rings off one shot, showing presence, but ultimately going to fall away. And now what? Or maybe an A play, I think. It feels like Blitz is getting in nice and deep here. He feels to be in a good spot. Fame, though. Timing. Oh, no. That's so rough, man. And surely a move like that has, has got to just do it, you know? Sensu waiting patiently. They hear the drop behind them. 30 seconds to roll with. Still not over just yet. Player up on the boost to deal with. Flit is here early. Bomb as yet to be planted, so they need to make sure that that doesn't awkwardly hit the deck. Jane with a key Ooh, flank. Yeah, we're definitely on. However, there's only one guy in A main, so now it's a two versus two from the same sort of angle. Electronic gives himself away, but they're not going to be expecting Jame. Nine seconds on the plant. He's trying to deny it, and he will. Oh, big from Jame. Absolutely huge to keep VP in the running. I can't believe it. I cannot believe he's got that round. Fair play. Jame calls around and plays around himself, and it works. And the finest of margins. They stay alive. My God, that's a huge round to be taken. That force opens the door up once again for survival. Granted, an absolute mountain to climb. For v VPs get back in towards this game. But at the very least, that is as good of a start as it can get. Force by converted. Hurting the econ over towards the Mongols and... Basically forcing their hand. They have to buy back in themselves. Galil is the best weapon they've got to bring to the table. And very limited utility. They've got two smokes left to wield. For the remaining one minute 30 of this round. Realistically, VP should get a fourth here and should be able to kickstart something on this CT side.
Just the sound of weapons and knives and nades getting swapped over. Just hear a pin drop at the moment until they burst forwards, of course. Nearly, nearly finishing off Flit. Lost the wave from here, man. That one smoke they have left to work with. Gonna have to... I don't know, smoke out default, something like that. Like, they're, they're looking for a roll around onto a... Easier said than done. The double donut setup. Pretty deadly. 30 seconds left. They're actually headed through their own smoke. And they will indeed catch Flit off guard just as it trickles down. And there's the man, Norbert, ready for the trade. But he's smoked off. We'll see what the A site says. However, as I mentioned, that two-man setup in the donut is really difficult to get through. 9-10 spotted in at middle. Can't quite find the head. They've created space for the bomb plant. Still not fully believing just yet. Yeah, they had to fight their way out somewhere. Mazzinio makes us believe for just a second, but unable to get anything substantial over the line. VP just going through the motions. Yeah, there was a moment. A real moment where potentially something could have come through there, but not to be. A bomb plant, though, you'll take. At the very least, on a four spy like that, it's going to at least... the. Stabilize the Econ a, a tad, not enough to buy, but at least in towards the next, they should have an AWP in play if they manage their funds well enough. We will see a little pause though come through. Good opportunity for once again, both coaches to get on top of the mic, only just Mara, but that's Dan too, right? As he desperately tries to bring these guys back into it. It's the Mongols who call for it. It's their first. Of course, they haven't really needed to call for any prior to this. They've been in pretty comfortable form. Only two rounds away. Just don't get too comfortable. Don't get too overconfident in the situation you find yourself in. You cannot allow Virtus Pro anything. Pause concluded. We go back underway. Actually, arguing up for a force here, though. Fair play. Mongs off the back of the kills they got, and the bomb plant want to go again. Some teams would opt for a lesser buy here and have, you know, rifles and AWP in towards the next. Mongols, other ideas. Quad Galil on a Mac 10. But once again, the one thing that lets them down in this round more than anything is just a lack of utility. Double flash and a molly is all they've got left to work with for the rest of this round. Post plants feel now an impossible bar just taking raw angels. Oh my goodness. Well, that's what they're going for thus far. It finds success. Fame, though, out in the open. Playing passively. Nade softens up his next target, but Blitz still wins that fight. You've got to be joking. Holy hell, maybe okay. we're on. Maybe we're on. 3v3. Orbit's position given away. Spamming the flashes right now, but there's no smoke to stop him peeking. Mac 10, surely not the weapon of choice. 9 10 up top gets dinked out. Thank goodness he was already a bit lower. And Mazzinio rocking a hard place choice. So VP keep them rolling. Same thing once again. You know, it's exact same as that previous round where the only thing that lets them down is just because they don't have any utility, they just cannot set up a post barn. They can't go anywhere. The only place they, baby, they, they, they basically could have played would have been back in towards Dona. It's not that easy. So. That's the one that lets them down. Even getting out towards mid here, it takes so much damage because there's no red room smoke. There's no, not even, you know, if he wants, there's no shelf smoke either. They have to take these raw fights and it doesn't work out. And this time they will call for a little bit of a lesser buy. At the very least, lost burns and the rest, they should be fine. They're going to go quick towards A though once again. And actually, they're going to get a lot of space here. Fames into Donut, but they might have to just give up this one early. Swing in towards the fight, and he will be traded. But has the support. Electronic gets two. That's huge. Oh. <laughs> Blitz going to get it eventually. That's kind of mad. Sensu as well. Also looking good here on the deke. Such a weird little round, this one, for sure. But oh, Blitz has got his hands onto an AK now. It's doable. And he's going for a big reposition. It's not like time is of the We're essence going. here. Out. Sensu doesn't find any kills with him. Blitz, though, has brought it down to the 1v1. Certainly doable. Spot in the head. Norbert goes wide for him, though. Well played there. Nice and comfortable. Good composure from Norbert. VP, it comes hella close, however. Oh, there's a moment. There was a moment. Doesn't happen. So thankfully, in the end, it's okay. But four to five kills. 
Not terrible for a low buy round. No one's complaining there at all. If Electronic only gets traded at one, who knows what could have happened in that situation. But it is VP climbing back into this. Not quite reaching distance, but starting to understand how they might get there. Molotov, Electronic, you're burning. Electronic is dying. Through the flames, Jamin Fame, though, gonna find one of their own. Pushing out of elbow like that. It's careless, it's reckless, and they get caught. This is getting out of hand, ever so slightly. Kind of a mental game in the second half, at the very least. You know, it was all about Mongols in the first, but this is, yeah, just getting kind of ridiculous. And as I've mentioned a couple times, the Mongols, they like chaos. They were born in it. All right, uh, that's enough. Either way, <laughs> three versus three here as VP looking to stay alive. James solidly holding. Distract away for Flit to find that kill. Mr. Techno 4K on the backside, on the lurk against three. Not going to be easy. That goes without saying. But full HP and a smoke. And 50 seconds to try and find some fights. So I'm going to completely count him out. Has a gap to work with, but as he goes towards Temple, that's where he becomes a little bit more vulnerable. Shadow might betray him, in fact. And it does. Nobody see it off. Virtus Pro, far from done in this game. This is a good few rounds. Timeout important, of course, here. Super, super tense stuff. You know, yes, they are in the lead, but as you mentioned, it has shrunk quite substantially. get to 11.10 before they take their time out. It's not a panicked call. It is calculated. It is fully respectful. And hopefully for them, it will be effective. Securing 12 is that small sigh of relief. Not completely, but it, you know, just, you're not going to lose. You're not going to throw it away. Yeah. Subconscious at that point. James. Got the right idea, but that flame burns so bright. Nothing offering up just yet. They've managed to make their way out of Double Door. That's the first thing. It's the first step. This solo AK, the hero AK from Senzu. He's got to try and pull off a bit of magic here. It's not going to be the easiest. A much slower round. Similar thing again. They've got a lot of Util to work with. One Molly, one Flash. The Mongols just hoping that VP overextend into them, give them the fights, but so far it's not happening. Loads of players in cave here, though, for the Mongols. So that's good fun. And there's no one around. It is a good time, I think, to try and brute force it through this angle. Flash will come in. Ooh. A little, a little spam, a little giveaway that there is indeed somebody in there, but only the one player that went for it, really. So, true. Still, three at cave is pretty unexpected at this late stage. Slow smoke over the top, 30 seconds to go. The AWP holding from slant. Your window is shrinking. Flit looking for the early frags. He will spot out the bomb at the very least. Jane misses indeed his second shot, but he will make them work. As he gets the wall bang going, two versus two now. Bomb goes down. Jame continues, but eventually bites off more than he can chew. And this may well be 12. Fame on the backside quite quickly, though, is certainly unexpected, as you can see from the positions. Mr. Sensu moves on to the AWP. Oh, my. Somehow not spotting Fame from that angle. And now down to Techno. Looking for the timing. Left low. Fame's got a kit. He's got a molly. He's got a nade. He's cool, man. This is in his hands right now. Spam coming through. Unable to find it. Reload has to come off. You're nowhere near. Ooh, the odd bullet is landing, but Fame gets the five-second defuse in easily. Oh, my God. Close. Close for the Mongols. I, I'm so surprised Jay missed that second shot. I don't even know how it happens, but... My God. These rounds are so back and forth. And another kind of... 
not no buy, but low buy out for the Mongols, which gets so close. And this is why they get spurred on into doing these sort of kind of, uh, you know, investments into kind of hero AKs or going towards the tech clan armor because they are getting so close. But that's been the story of the second half. It's, it's close, but no cigar. They've only got the pistol thus far. Things I've been worrying. This is a, you know, no two ways about it. A very good run out of Versus Pro. On the top of me, Senzu, forcing him away. It does feel like this game is far from over. Only three rounds in it. The economic state of the Mongols keeps going back and forth and keeps them actually quite vulnerable. Some mollies here for the Mongols to create some space. This is potentially the round you would have expected them to talk over in that timeout. Mazzinio, perfect timing. Fame had just started to drop back as well. Key fight won. Mazzinio could not correct his crosshair in time, but still a one for one and a confirmation that A was actually a little better defended. And there is a gap that has opened up. Blitz has found it. He's making a lot of noise here. They're going to know about him, but he's a distraction. At the very least... Maybe he's heard fame running away as well. So they're going to look back towards B in the 3v3. Blitz gives his life away. That's maybe the only part of that move that I don't quite agree with. Bomb plant coming in. Fame here quickly. And he has much better discipline. He will peek in though. And again, nearly loses his life. But he's gathered the info for James to work with leaving it all. Down to Techno. He gets stuck on the wall trying to get out of there. And now we are within two. Oh my god, this is game on. Oh, this is starting to feel like a possibility. Absolutely. James, really, really good stuff from him. Just getting caught on the wall there, like you said. It's, yeah, it's heartbreaking. That's a, such a tough way for it to fall. But in the end, it was going to be a 1v3 that he had to try and convert. So it was a big ask. Another pause to come through. You can understand why this game... Absolutely feels like it's got some legs behind it. And what felt like it was a done story. 10 to 2 at the half. 11 to 2 as the Mongols find the pistol. I think we all probably thought that this was going to be a quick one. And now anything but seven in a row out of Virtus Pro. Off the back of just a random force with a couple of SMGs after losing their pistol. Look where they find themselves now. A lot of pressure on the shoulders of the Mongols. And losing this would be absolutely heartbreaking. They will know how bad. I mean, arguably one of the biggest fumbles we've seen all tournament, if it, that is the case. But they still got a two-round lead, and they're only two rounds away. Job not done, though. Back into the bye. 9 10 of the AWP. Might be a quick round here once again. And he goes towards long, and they're just going to completely relinquish mid uh, mid control here. They're going to give it up towards VP. <sighs> Steps into cave have been heard. That's problematic. 9-10 going to go down to the double nades as well. Electronic with an easy kill. And an easy 5v3. Oh no, the Mongols, man. They've just got to be having all those alarm bells ringing right now. Fame in at Cubby will get checked, but it's easy for him. He was AD in to be a hard target to hit. Team Ace on the cards. Where's Flit? Get him involved. They have really not started anything on that T side. Absolutely mental stuff, VP. That they're doing it for my money. They are doing it now. Yeah. No, no, you absolutely spot on. I mean, they for the most part not really breaking a sweat into a lot of these. Flit does want to team Ace, and of course he'll get it. So the team Ace does come through. Everybody charming in for a kill. Smiles all round. One round in it. I cannot believe we are here. Oh, the versus pro. What a recovery. What a story we're being gifted with as well. And no more pauses for the Mongols to call. They, you know, Mara has to just sit there and watch. They can't take a breather. They can't take a break. This is Dyer. No bump on, no bite. Got the last bonus, yes, but the best they can muster is tech nines. And I think in a couple of these rounds when they really needed it. At the tail end. 
of that map number two. So maybe, just maybe, be a chance. But let's have a come down. Flip will burn. A lot of Yuto being dumped here by the VP just to deny them space, but they might even just fade the smoke here, and it might just work for them. Norbert looking in the same places where Flit is. They could creep through. Here we go, bursting forwards. Norbert ready. Oh my, but the Tech Nines do come round. Techno in particular. Oh my god, getting very cheeky indeed. A missed shot, but he doesn't overface. I think he ran out of ammo. I think he ran out of ammo. Bomb plant does go down. Techno. Ooh, playing safe. Electronic can't mess this one up, and he's not giving his game away just yet. Techno, therefore, not ready for Electronic hugging that wall to close the gap. It's all on Blitz. One versus three, and he is not paying attention to the flank at all, but a step heard. Oh, he's left on two HP. Surely not. Elect Electronic should be able to find this, you would think. James, low, round the corner, does go down. Headshot is all he needs now. For the 1v3, Electronic sees it off, though. Oh my, the heart is racing, I'm sure, for everybody involved. 11-11, but Mongols will not go quietly. And this is what we're seeing, right? So close, but they just can't see the round off. Another one where it's a low buy, and it gets close. Bomb down, 1v1, everything you want for the Mongols, but they just cannot see off that, that final hurdle. They can't make it over. Oh my god, what a game we've got on our hands here. Guaranteed the full round in regulation and maybe and some back into a buy. And this actually could be the last hurrah, in all fairness. For the Mongols lose this round, Econ could be shattered. We'll see. Blitz out towards mid. Blitz will find the first. Hang on a second. Maybe finally a bit of comfort. We'll get one and 910 making a move in through Donut. He's got the right idea, but he's not committing to it. Oh my god, he's gonna be a core. What is that spam from Flit? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Know your angles, man. And that's gonna turn the tide there, encroaching in towards middle here to try and crunch. Ooh, timer is on for the Mongols. The B bomb site indeed is vulnerable. Jane with a passive hold. However, find success. Not quite ready for them, but he survives just. Oh my god. Oh my goodness, do not move. One HP, Techno 4K after him, takes him down. The tension palpable right now. Timing misjudged by Blitz gives the advantage back in favor of VP. However, they're all coming in from this sort of T side of the bomb site. What is going on? Smoke goes down. Mazzinho finished quickly. It's all going to be on to Techno. They know exactly where he is at. The bomb, though, planted in a decent spot for him to find the spam. He's caught reloading. He's got to get that player off the bomb, and he can't flip denies him. And VP will continue the streak. Oh, my good Lord. Not losing a round in 10. Can they make it 11? I cannot believe what we're witnessing. Every single time Mongols get themselves into an advantageous position, VP claw it back in their favor. This is... It's just miraculous. This has to be one of the best comebacks you've seen in such a long time. 10-2 down at the half. 11-2 down off the back of Mongols taking the pistol. And then, if they make this 13-11, the most ridiculous recovery I've seen. And a quick play, it seems. They're not even stepping it up. This is straight into the fight and straight into the meat grinder. Faye might have just closed it. Three kills to his name. Looking for more as well. Damage dealt. Flit will find Blitz. And 9-10 needs a 1v4. I cannot believe what I've just witnessed. Virtus Pro, the most ridiculous recovery I have ever seen at this level. And that we've cast at the very least. That was incredible. I'm just absolutely perplexed. Oh my good God. That is crazy. Oh that is absolutely mental, you know.